Okay, we have a good one here today. We have the HP Elite Book X G1A. So this is going to be the top performing business, 14 inch business uh, laptop for 2025 so far. Uh, it's running the AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX Pro 375. So this is geared towards businesses, the most performant in terms of the processor. It's also got the Radeon 890M graphics. And this of course is an excellent integrated solution. Now I have the uh, full HD model here with the matte display. And I also have the 2.8K OLED, which of course is not only a uh, high refresh rate, it, it's 120 Hertz and it's a dynamic refresh rate, but you could also get this with, uh, it has touch on it and it has an excellent coverage of the color gamut. It's color accurate. This will give you the maximized battery life in terms of this chipset. So this has been great also, but again, if you need the higher end display, they're offering this. This is not cheap. We're gonna get that right off the bat. This starts at around $21, $2,200. I think this one's about $2,700, especially with this display. So this is not gonna come cheap, but these are the premier business focused laptops that give you the performance it's going to be better performance over intel's lunar lake as well as a snapdragon x elite and one advantage this has of course over that snapdragon no compatibility issues no driver issues everything will work with x86 apps so you won't have to worry about any of that the build here is excellent it's got a premier keyboard on here it's really nice it's got a glass touchpad it's not haptic but it's really good uh, got a great five megapixel camera here that is outstanding. It's really good. And it's got some amazing speakers on this considering this is a business focused laptop. This thing has been great. So you have the two choices on the display and probably so far one of the best 14 inch laptops. Again, if you need the performance, this is gonna do great. And by the way, also great battery life, not quite as good as the Lunar Lake or the Snapdragon X Elite, but pretty good. So the overall total package here is excellent. It just comes in at a very high price. We're gonna get into it and more in this review. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is the HP Elite Book X, the G1A, brand new for 2025, coming up. Okay, so let's start off with the build and quality and the design. So this has a silver color, very basic silver, very premium, understated. I love this look, I absolutely love it. Shows very little fingerprint, so I love that as well. It's got that really nice HP logo and it's their modern logo, it's really nice. It's got a great build. Now, one thing you will notice, it is thicker and heavier than some of the Intel counterparts with Lunar Lake, as well as the Snapdragon X Elite, X Plus Live laptops that we've been seeing. So these, this is going to be coming a little heavier and a little bulkier, but I don't mind the extra weight given the performance that this is able to produce. Now, uh, we're talking about the AMD Ryzen, uh, so AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX Pro 375. How I managed that, I probably screwed it up, but who knows? Uh, very nice overall performance. And let's look at the numbers right now. The single and multi-core performance, certainly top of the class here, certainly rivals that of of the Apple MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, stuff like that, so which are great in its own right with the M series, uh, M4 series. So this is excellent in terms of performance. So if you want a Windows laptop feature towards businesses, you will want to choose this if you're looking for excellent single and multi-core performance. Doing everyday tasks such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, everything handled with a with a breeze here. Everything worked really well. No hiccups, no slowdowns. It's a great media consumption device. Obviously Obviously, with the 2.8K OLED, the display will be better for that, uh, especially for content creation. We'll get into the display in a moment. But as far as performance is concerned, you can do very well on this. Now, as far as gaming and stuff like that in your downtime, certainly doable here with the Radeon 890M graphics, certainly capable. Maybe not quite as good in the synthetic benchmarks as the Lunar Lake, but it's there. They're, they're, they're neck and neck in a lot of ways, uh, especially in real world usage. So excellent in terms of doing 1080p video editing and you resolve. You could also do uh, light 4K video editing. This will definitely give you the performance. Now, as far as running cool and quiet, pretty much for the most part, yes, 
Yes, it does run cool and quiet. Surface temperatures remained at bay, even under heavy load. And the fan noise never got overly loud. So I think they did a good job in balancing performance and the thermals here. I didn't see hardly any thermal throttling on this, pretty much non-existent. So that's been great when I ran the Time Spy stress test. So that's been very good. So the overall performance here has been very good. Now, it's pretty efficient as well. We're seeing excellent numbers when it comes to battery life. As you can see, not quite as good as some of the Lunar Lake or Snapdragon X processors we've been seeing with the ARM, but this is definitely up there. So it's a nice balance for performance, efficiency, battery life. So the battery life has been very good. I ran the PC Mark 10 Modern Office test on both the Full HD, which of course is a 60 Hertz display. And then of course the 2.8K OLED, which is 120 Hertz. Obviously you're gonna do better battery life on the Full HD, there's not a question there, but of course this is gonna give you more longevity. Now, let's talk about the displays here. So this is that 1920 by 1200 Full HD 60 Hertz display, so it's not high res, but this will give you the best battery life. This is the 2.8K OLED. Of course, this is going to have the 120 Hertz. You have the dynamic refresh rate or variable refresh rate on this, so it'll switch, I think, between 48 and 120. Uh, but it is very good in terms of the scrolling and all the smoothness that you get from a high refresh rate. So definitely, if you're a content creator, we want to look at this one. Of course, this one comes in at a higher price, a very high price. We'll get into the pricing later, but this is going to be more expensive than this one. This one, of course, will give you, like I said, more efficiency, more longevity in terms of the battery life. So display has been very good. The color accuracy is going to be better on this. The coverage of the color gamut is going to be better. And one thing, though, there is a difference. If you are sensitive to PWM, I would go with the Full HD. This does exhibit uh, PWM or screen flickering, which is part of the technology used in OLED. So you might want to be careful with there. But if you want to have no problem with that, certainly the Full HD will do the job here. Again, you're not going to be quite as nice as the display, but it's a nice display in its own right. This is actually pretty bright, as you can see from the numbers. This one's pretty bright as well. So this one's HDR, this one's not. So it's just some differences there. Again, you're paying more of a premium for the uh, 2.8K OLED display. But having the touch layer on this is great for pinch to zoom scrolling. You'll be able to do it on this one, not a problem. This one non-touch, but again, some people don't want that. Now these displays go back as far as you see there, so they're pretty good in terms of the viewing angles. It doesn't go back quite 180 degrees, but it goes down pretty far, so not an issue. And I love the fact that these are uh, hinges on on here are really great. Very little minimal screen wobble, so that's been great. Now let's talk about the I/O. So on the left side, you get an HDMI port 2.1, two USB Type C. Uh, oh, actually, two USB-C ports. One is a 3.2 Gen 2. The other one is a Thunderbolt 4 port, and you get a headphone jack. So that's all on the left side. You also get a speaker grill there. Now, on the right side is a second USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 port, and then you get a USB Type-A and a Kensington lock. So excellent port selection, and I love, love the fact that they split up the USB-C ports. Uh, two on the left side, one on the right, and the two Thunderbolt ports are split up there. So that's great. Now, notice missing, no micro SD or full size SD card reader, but other than that, an excellent port selection. Again, well thought out there, so that's been pretty good. Now, as far as the keyboard is concerned, I'm actually a big fan of this keyboard. And as you can see, the dark keys are gonna be easier to see when you have the backlight on. So that's been really good in terms of typing out documents, emails. Uh, the key travel has been very good and the overall tactility functionality of it is very good. So I really am a big fan of this keyboard. Uh, well laid out as well. I think I think it's a really good one. It's got the co-pilot key for the uh, co-pilot and all that stuff, the AI. It is an AI PC. Uh, but overall, the typing experience has been very good and I have no complaints. Now, the touchpad is a glass precision touchpad that's very responsive when it comes to scrolling and all the gestures, so not an issue in terms of using it. However, at this price point, I would like to see a haptic touchpad. We don't get that on here. You know, we know HP makes some really nice haptic touchpads. We saw it on the HP Omnibook Ultra Flip 14 that we looked at. So I kind of wish it was on here, to be honest. But as far as a traditional style glass touchpad, this certainly did the job. Not a problem. Now, one of the areas where this is really shining is in the camera. It's got a five megapixel webcam here. It's IR, allowing you to log in with face recognition. There's also the fingerprint scanner. The power button doubles as the fingerprint scanner, and that's going to the be allow, allow you to log in with Windows Hello. It is IR. There is a physical shutter switch above the camera for more security and privacy. 
Now, they also have the Poly Camera Pro here as far as the camera is concerned, and it gives you a lot of features, a lot of background stuff you can do on it, and of course, that's worked out really well. The camera quality is excellent on this for your Zoom calls and to do any of your video conferencing, so the Poly Camera Pro, stuff like that, that all worked out really well. I'm very happy with the ability to use this app. It's really good. Uh, Poly Camera Pro is included at no additional cost, and you can custom the scenes and stuff like that. Let's give it a look and a listen and you let me know what you think in the comments section below. So we're looking at a five megapixel camera and it also the Poly Camera Pro, which is a really great camera app, especially if you're gonna do video conferencing and so forth. I'm um, using the default Windows app here. This is a uh, 2K resolution. It's a five megapixel camera, as I mentioned. It's an IR camera. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. Now, another area where this is really shining is in the sound. The speakers on this are excellent. I did a comparison in the uh, live unboxing video that I did a couple of weeks Weeks ago. I'll leave a link to the replay if you didn't check it out. So we were able to put it up against some of the uh, top contenders here, but let's give it a listen to it and you let me know what you think in the comment section below. So let's give it a look and a listen. <laughs> MacBook Pro. Now, when it comes to the internals, as you can see, it has a dual fan setup inside, and it also has user upgradability when it comes to the SSD. The one terabyte with my review unit has some excellent reads and writes. It's an M.2 2280 full size SSD, so those are really common to get, and you can upgrade it yourself. There is a nice service video that HP has. I'll leave a link to it in the description below showing you how to replace it, as well as other parts on this unit. Now, the RAM is uh, soldered into the motherboard, obviously, with this, but it's not upgradable by the user, but you can get this with, I believe, up to 128 gigabytes of memory uh, that will, of course, not be user upgradable, but for those that need quite amount, that amount of RAM, this is certainly the case. They were offering that a couple of weeks ago. I'll leave a link to the description below. With the OLED display, 128 gigabytes, that's pretty amazing. Again, certainly better than Lunar Lake, which caps out at 32 gigabytes, so that is definitely uh, one you want to look at if you have more RAM requirements, so excellent in that regard. Now, when it comes to the wireless here, you're looking at Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth here, and that's worked out well. I have no issue with either the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth, so that has been pretty good. And as far as 5G, I don't know if they're offering it on this, so I'm gonna have to look into that. I didn't see anything, but they may be offering that. I don't know. Again, I'll look into it. I'll ask HP if they're gonna offer a model with optional 5G. Hopefully they will, because of course, we know in the past Elite Books have had 5G. So again, stay tuned, I'll bring you that info. So so the overall takeaway here is HP hit a home run. They got, they got it right with the displays, the two options here, one matte, one glossy, but certainly, uh, definitely there, you have the options there. Of course, if you want the high res display, go with the 2.8K OLED. It's got a great keyboard, great build quality, great design. I really like this understated design. It doesn't show a lot of fingerprints. It is a little bit heavier than the competition, but that's okay if you're gonna get more performance and put a better cooling solution, I'll take it. And speaking of which, it never got overly hot. It wasn't loud in terms of the fan noise when under load. So this has been done the job. It's really a great laptop with a great camera on it as well. So if you do a lot of video conferencing and stuff like that, this certainly will get the job done. The only thing that's a negative here, obviously, is the big price. It's definitely a sign of the times. This is not just specific to this laptop, but the Dells came in high. As far as business laptops, Lenovo's ThinkPads are high right now. Everything is high. Apple MacBooks are high. So the overall takeaway is you're going to pay a premium right now so that is just something you'll have to deal with but right now this is the best performing 14 inch business laptop on the market as far as 
Windows is concerned. But I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. Now, we're making our push for 200,000 subscribers. We're about to hit 196,000. We're growing at a rapid rate. So I do appreciate it. And I'm very humbled by the support and the outpouring of views and everything. So really good so far. So if you're a casual viewer of my content, why not hit that subscribe button? If you're not already subscribed, it doesn't cost anything to do to do so. So why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell. So until next time, this is Andrew and I'll see you in the next video.